Oh, it's flip-flopped on that screen. How strange. All right, looks like it's up on Steam, too. So for all the people watching, happy Thursday, community. My name is Jesse Gray from Good Shepherd Entertainment, and today we have a special stream for you with the voice actors, composer, and lore master of Monster Train to scratch all of your DLC itches, at least until March 25th. Uh, so we're talking Monster Train, voice acting, sounds, music. So get your questions ready, and then we will ask them at the end if we have a little bit of time. So we'll go ahead and put them in chat, and we'll scroll into them. Uh, we're going to start by introducing, at a very basic level, and then having them elaborate, D.B. Cooper, uh, who voiced Echorite, Hef, and Steel Singer. Michael, I, want, I always want to say Schwalaby because it sounds like so awesome. Is that really how you say your name, Michael Schwalaby? It, you're, you're close, yeah. It's, sh it's Schwalby. You Schwalby. almost put like a third syllable in there, like Schwalaby. That was Schwalby. Kind of Actually, it's more cute and cuddly that way because it's like yeah. <laughs> it's a cute and cuddly name. It really. Is. I want a Michael I'm Schwalaby. Cute and <laughs> Can I ask why DB is an artist and I'm just an actor? I want to be an artist. Well, you know, it's a slash. I can't convey that vocally. You'll have to help me. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, Michael, who did Apex, Glug, Slider, Apex Amp, of course, Glug, Slider, and Spine Chief. Brendan, you guys all know Redbeard, the lore master from Shiny Shoe. Brendan. And uh, let's see, composer Jordan Chin, who made the hellish, do we say hellish music? That sounds bad. Heavenly is Delightful. bad too. Heavenly, too, indeed, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start with you, Brendan, so people have a clue who are maybe watching this have not played Monster Train and don't know anything sure. about this. So how clear were you on how all of this should sound, and do you want to go into the basic kind of lore story for Monster Train? Yeah, so uh, you are on a train, the Bone Shaker, and, of course, you're on this train through hell, through all nine rings as you're trying to uh, unfreeze hell. It's been frozen over by... Uh, these bird-like angel things that uh, called the winged that have frozen hell, taken over. You're going through and melting it with your pyre, which is this big crystal that's on the top of your train, uh, and just trying to get to the end with your band of creatures and friends and uh, that all just sound and are voiced awesomely. Um, so for the DLC, we wanted to do something new, obviously, um, but something that was very different from what we've done in the past. Um, and we'd explored a pretty wide vocal range for a lot of the different clans that we already had. So we wanted to do something, um, the idea for the Wormkin, which is the main focal point of the uh, DLC, uh, we wanted something that was going to feel underground, like kind of have a reason for why it wasn't there in the first place. So something that's kind of crawling from the depths seemed to make sense. So from a sound point of view, uh, that meant that it was going to be less vocal. It was a lot more fully and kind of percussive sounds. So we uh jordan and i talked about it for a long time and we weren't quite sure what we wanted to do because we really really wanted to work with db and michael but we also wanted them to sound different and interesting which is their job and they did fantastic um so we'll hear some of that later obviously but in terms of direction i think as it's been through this entire process we have vague kind of high level ideas but it's really michael and db that are like bringing it home and really bringing their own sensibilities to making it as awesome as it is. Very cool. So collaborative effort. With that in mind, why don't you guys introduce yourselves um, fully and talk about some other projects. You know, people will recognize you. That's the thing. You're so good at doing all these different voices. People might not know that's you. So uh, DB, you want to go first, then we'll jump. Michael. Sure. Um, I'm DB Cooper, and I've been voice acting since about a million years ago, it feels like. And, and uh, the things that you can hear me in specifically are uh, Hearthstone and Bioshock 2. I'm the first voice recorder you come to in that game. I'm also in um, Arizona Sunshine, The Damned. I'm Commander Emily in that. Please play it because it's just wicked. It's awesome. And uh, also, along with Michael... I'm in System Shock, which is coming out this fall. So that is altogether pretty spiffy. And of course, Monster Train, seriously, one of the most favorite games I have ever worked on, ever. It's yeah. constantly it's constantly a stretch. It's a vocal stretch of imagination and, uh, and sometimes gear. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, so before we jump to Michael, it seems like a very like small, cool circle that's voice acting. Like you all seem to know each other and you work on so many projects together. Is, is that the case? I mean, you just mentioned you're working on another one, but it seems like you all know each other pretty well. 
No, they don't. Are, they you, don't. are you talking to me? Yes. I'm sorry. I, are you talking to me or Michael? <laughs> either one of you. Whoever okay, well, me. actually, uh, Michael and I have been friends for a long time. We met at the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco. And but Michael was already a rock star by the time I met him, and so he has all of this. True, the uh, so he's got this huge body of work. Plus, he also casts. I cast as well, so we've got that connection. And there is a cadre of of video game performers that we kind of are all aware of one another. I think. Don't you think that's true? Yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm staying quiet because naturally, the second we started this, a a cadre of landscapers started blow <laughs> leaf blowers right outside my leaf window. blowers. Oh my god, the bane oh, of VO. It literally was like right here. I was like like rattling my walls, and I was like, oh my god. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, like, definitely. Is, is there a live stream going on somewhere? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, oh. Please finish quickly. Um, I can't anyway. even hear it. I don't know if anybody else can well, hear it. No, it, they, I, they managed to move away a little bit, but mm -hmm. uh, I'll just get closer and closer to my mic the louder they get. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, we, we definitely, there's like several different circles in, in mm -hmm. VO community. There's there's definitely the GDC circle that, that DB and I met at, and then there's kind of the online circle. Like we do a lot of remote work together um with a lot of actors that i know just kind of around the country and then there's also like the los angeles circle that um is all very tight-knit and they all work together and i was living in los angeles for the last number of years so i i'm kind of in both those worlds and uh, yeah you there's maybe a few hundred total and so you you're just constantly like there's yeah different spheres we've yeah. got that venn diagram of overlap <laughs> But, but then it's specifically for like creature monster work, it's much, much smaller even still. Um, you, me, so. and Fred Tatashore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, and, and D. Bradley Baker. He's oh, yes, yes, king. yes. And Kellen Goff, he rules too. Um, anyway, uh, I'm Michael Schwalbe. Uh, I've been a full-time voice actor for seven plus years now. The time doesn't really have any meaning anymore in this pandemic, but um, you've heard me in Half-Life Alex and in um system well you're gonna hear me in system shock remaster coming out this uh s this fall god what else have i even done i'm in bug snacks uh, i'm stupid bug newbie and about seven other snacks uh slay the spire yeah yeah well that's the thing is right is like since i'm everything in slay the spire and so somehow i've accidentally become the voice of this genre yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah so that was surreal it was like hey can you do these non-verbals for this like little two-person game we're making and then now it's like the number seven rated game on steam of all time so you never know what's going to be a hit so and then also monster train db and i are what like total cumulatively 60, 400 voices no 400, i mean yeah, like I'm like 60 or 70 by this point, I think, and DB is like that many. So we we are every single creature monster you hear in this game. You may not know that. So, so um, Jordan, how many are there? I think I asked you one time, and that was like before this last iteration. Do you know how many creatures we've done? No, after this uh, this DLC, I want to say it's it's closer to 80. Yeah. Each a piece, a piece. Yeah, yeah a piece. Oh, God. Yeah. Wow. It is. Uh, insane how how versatile you know you two have been with this i think um, that's my new record actually because i did something like 60 for different cards and creatures for eternal the trading mm -hmm. card game. and so that so 80 might be the new record thanks awesome guys. yeah we've yeah. got and we've, the thing is is we've got more ideas i can't <laughs> wait to see what happens next because <laughs> we've got yeah also yeah. shout out to jeremy lynn in the in the twitch chat my bro <laughs> oh, hey, Jeremy. Jordan, um, you know, Brendan's on fairly often, so we're just going to, like, take advantage of him and not bother to go into too much because you all know him in the community. Um, Jordan, everyone loves your music. Um, I'm going to actually see if I can play one of your songs for The Lost Divinity while we do that. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, too. But do you want to go over, like, maybe just tell people maybe they, other things or whatever you'd like to share about that, about yourself? Yeah, uh, I mean, I've been a musician for most of my life, and specifically in games for maybe eight years now. Um, and Monster Train has just been one of those 
rare projects where like the kind of music that I needed to write and the kind of music I love to write coincided. And so it was just um, a real joy writing for the base game of Monster Train, working with Brendan to figure out, you know, what does it sound like fighting on a, a train that's headed through the rings of hell? And coming up with a sound for that and then expanding on it, in, like this is the third uh, update, I want to say. No, the fourth update that we've done for Monster mm. Train, this upcoming one. And so every time uh, it's been a challenge to kind of like stay true to what the original sound of Monster Train was and bring in something new. So I did the Friends and Foes update. We tried to bring in like a prog rock type of thing. With this last one, um, which I'm sure you guys will hear, um, it's like, I guess, sort of <clears throat> a return back to the original. Um, we can talk about it a little bit more, but the idea was hit him with a nostalgia bomb, I think, <laughs> was basically my, you know, the game, we had the advantage of the game having been out um, for almost a year now. And so, um, you know, we had a lot of themes that we could pull from and kind of revisit in new ways that would hopefully sound familiar to people that are playing the game. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's about it for me. Okay. Uh, so let's jump into some of the character sounds and other things. I'm going to pause this, guys. We'll come back to the soundtrack here, but I will confuse the sounds of everyone here. Uh, so you, I know, I mean, you just mentioned you had all of these male, female characters from the original game. Have you gotten attached to <clears> any <throat> one of them, like even DLC or old school? Do you oh, have yeah. a character that's like your, this is the one? Without a doubt, Hef is my spirit animal. <laughs> I'm going to play Hef spawn now. Yeah. It even looks like uh, it. it. even looks like it. That's right. I'm working yeah. on the arms. I'm working on the arms to get there. Uh, and I do my hair up like that. I think of her whenever I do my hair because I like it to go. Yeah, you do not mess with Hef. Definitely not. You, I'm, I'm going to show people. Here is Hef if you're looking and you're like, I don't know who Hef is. Um, this is Hef. Right there. I'm gonna play the, let's see, the spawn one. She's like, when she comes with the spawn one, she's like, oh, bleh, bleh. it sounds like so like, like, oh, do I have to be here? Oh my God. Yeah. It's like what, you again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you know what you want? You've been standing in line for an hour. Yeah. Spawn two though yeah. is much more enthusiastic. Sure. I like that. All right. We uh, like what you have in mind. I love yeah. that rockabilly guitar, though. Doesn't that isn't that awesome? <laughs> yes, I'm gonna play that. Yeah. Uh huh. I'll show you my tattoos. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've got uh, half there, but so half's your favorite. What about you, Michael? Uh, I mean, any time that you get to be the final boss is pretty uh -huh. sweet. Uh, I would say I would say that Seraph is probably. I wouldn't call him my spirit animal necessarily, but uh, I think that the sounds that we put together and then that awesome uh making of video that jordan put together for seraph is so cool and uh, i love to see the process that goes into the insane um post-processing work and the all the manipulation that he did to make me sound even more evil on on the, from his side so uh i i love seraph i love the merchant cat thing uh <laughs> I, I don't know what his name is but uh the, the unofficial him. name is Frank, I believe. Frank! It, it that, <laughs> Brandon, you want to explain the cats? Because people do ask. We uh, So there's three cats. They're all cousins of each other. Um, okay. The original idea was that they were these trains that were kind of Frankenstein together. So it was just a really bad pun is what it started as was Frankenstein. Oh. So it, all the cats are named Frank. Uh, but they just all have, it's like F-R-A-N-K, F-R-A-N-C, and F-R-A-N-Q. So it's just all different Franks. Awesome. That's great. That's great. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, see, no, it's Frank, he's like kind of like, something like that, right? Uh, yeah. But, uh, so I like, I like him. I like the Umbra guy, the champion oh. for him, because that's just such a cool noise that I love to make. Uh, so... There's, there's a lot. I really, I just love the game in, in general. It's it's kind of rare that games come out that I like actually like playing, but uh, that I'm in that, and um, definitely Monster Train. It's more accessible to, to me as well. I'm not quite 
brainy enough for some of the other entries in this genre. But not that Monster Train isn't brainy, but it's like no, I understand what you're saying. You're saying you, you can get into you can it. pick it up and have yes. fun without like taking yeah. a college class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or to... feeling like you have factions who are going to kill you for being a noob. That's the other uh... thing. I just I love the fact that you can just sit and play this. But one of the one of the ways I keep in keep track of um, how people are enjoying the game is the Monster Train subreddit. <laughs> I look seriously, I look at it every week. At yeah, least a couple too. times a me week. Too. Yeah, I'm lurking. I see everything. <laughs> oh, I'll answer stuff, especially if someone likes the sound we made. It's like, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen you pop in there and on Facebook too. I appreciate that when you do that. Oh, yeah. I do that. Maybe it's like narcissistic, but I do that on a lot of the, on, of the uh, games that I'm in. Like, I, I lurk should. in the, the Devil May Cry 5 subreddit and then Smite mm -hmm. subreddit. And like, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he. yeah, you got it. That's awesome. You guys are players. Um, so what, how is the experience different this time? I mean, you've been doing this for a while, but now we're in DLC lands. Was there anything different or is it just, oh, back, back in the saddle and you know, uh, I'll, I'll hop in on this because it was, it was really hard. Uh, the first couple, like I've definitely got my, I'm sure DB does too, but have this bank of like, these are the archetypal directions that I'll go for, uh, for creatures. And then, you know, obviously based on the artwork, you know, if it's like the gorger, for instance, if he's got like all these teeth and like tongues rah, 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 kind of stuff, then you can use that to influence how you're going to make the sound. But like by the third DLC or the third session we, that we're doing, it's like, man, I've, I've used a lot of that. Like I actually have to get really creative now. Mm -hmm. And so I started going into like all the different, like what are just noises? Cause all of us just have a compulsion to make noises <laughs> and we've just managed to monetize it. So uh, like, so going into like, what are, what are all the other, other noises that I make in my day-to-day -day life just to be annoying that I could use as creatures. And so like one of them, uh, well, I won't go into the exact ones cause I think we're going to do that in a second, but it was, it was different because I had to go and, and like start getting really physical, like, like clicking on my teeth with my fingernails or like, just really out there stuff that I haven't had to do for a lot of other sessions. So we got, we got really creative and Jordan and um, who else was in the session, Jordan? It was Jordan oh. and Brendan, wasn't it? Was it yeah. Brendan? Okay. Yeah. Like it, it's just such a fun playground of, of collaborative, like, like what can we, what crazy stuff can we come up with that we, that we haven't done before. And, and a lot of times directors, like you get this feeling of like pressure or like, Oh, we need this sound or like, oh, no, I don't think that one's going to work. And literally every time with them, it's like, sure, let's try it. Like, okay. And so if you've ever done improv acting, it's very mm. yes. And like you just yeah. build on each other and, and bounce ideas off uh, and, and then end up coming with something that's really cool. And also with Jordan just being so stinking talented and Brendan too. I know that like, even if I come up with something that I would think, well, that's kind of dumb they're like no no uh, they they hear the possibilities of what they can do with it in post and, and everything so it's a it's a really fun environment to it is it's like a super supportive sandbox you know everybody's playing nicely and um so there's a lot of iterating um especially with something new like this this dlc group because we hadn't done bugs before and i had an idea of what i thought they wanted so I like gave, um, what I'll do is I'll record some ideas and send them to Jordan. And then when we get to the session, it'll be like, actually, we'd like to try that, at, but we also want to go in this direction. And then, so we have to make up a group of things on the fly, but I always have a few tools handy. So like you were talking about um, using your teeth, using things on your teeth. This is an empty pen case. <laughs> so if I need to do if I need to do anything with my <laughs> with my teeth, that's what I use. Because otherwise, you know, my my I don't have great fingernails, so it's just I use that one a lot actually. The, yeah, the teeth clacking stuff. Yeah, another and, thing I want to uh, mention is that the um, more so than any other clan um, in this game, the this sixth clan, uh, the Wormkin, we composited together a lot of different um ancillary sounds so in the past it's been like here's a picture of of a creature we'll give it to michael or db and then they'll do their interpretation and we'll kind of iterate on that 
for almost every single creature in this clan, there's, you know, there's at least three or four different sounds being stacked and smashed together. And so all the, you know, for them to kind of uh, innovate on different tools and different techniques and things like that, that might not have really worked on their own, but were a great layering tool um, was kind of where I, I felt like uh, these two really shined this time around was because I had tons of stuff to work with um, just, you know, in, in post and lots of, lots of room to be creative about it, which I loved. So. Yeah, and I don't you... think we could have done that in the base game, actually. A lot of it came from yeah. like having worked together and having an understanding, like a collective understanding of how these sounds would translate into the game. Yeah. And I think, like you guys said, you guys have done now like 80 characters a piece. So coming into this DLC, Jordan and I, one of the first things we talked about, like we, how do we make this sound different enough and distinct? And both of you being great of like, okay, we're gonna, you know, put some pens in our mouth and, and see what <laughs> comes out. And uh, it's been awesome. Well, the other thing that was marvelous about this was the chance to actually literally collaborate with Michael um, even at a distance to create creature sounds together. That was what I just absolutely loved because there are some of the creature sounds in here that are both Michael and me. 